Hi, I'm Hannah Lai Jones and welcome to this week's Maskcast, the weekly online update video about what's been happening in the mask community this week. In this week's edition, I chat to Maria Donelas from the University of St Andrews about a publication of hers in Nature, Ecology and Evolution. I chat to Jennifer Smith, the coordinator for the Nuffield Research Programme, and also there's an update from Mark Jones about the SMMR programme, so stay tuned. But first, as always, an update about the Mask webinar series. This week's presenter was Georgios Kazandinas from the University of Edinburgh and his talk was titled Implementing European Marine Policies in the Deep Waters of the North Atlantic. This talk was recorded along with its Q&A session, so if you're interested to find out what was discussed, please check out our YouTube channel and there will be a link below this video as well. Next week's talker is Dr Clive Fox from SAMS. His talk is titled Scotland's Experimental Electrofishing for the Razor Clams, Developments and Progress. There's still space for you to register if you want to attend, so you'll be able to find that link also below this video as well. If you aren't able to attend, don't worry, this session will be recorded and uploaded to this very YouTube channel itself. So um, yeah, we have a series of great talks coming up until July, and there actually is availability on the 1st, 8th and 15th of July. So if you want to give it a go, please contact us at our usual email address and we'll be able to accommodate that for you. And now for my chat with Maria about her recent paper that she co-authored. The paper is titled Temperature Related Biodiversity Change Across Temperate Marine and Terrestrial Systems. I asked Maria, what was this paper all about and what were the main results? Um, hi, Anna. Thank you for the invitation to be here. Um, so this is a paper that was led by um, a former PhD student um, uh, of mine, Lara Town, who is now based at the University of Helsinki. And what we did there was um, to take the Biotime database, which is a database that we um, host here in St. Andrews of Biodiversity Time Series. And we asked the question, do, um, do we see a signal of temperature change on biodiversity trends? And um, what we found, because in, um, like as, as I'm sure the mass community knows, although the planet is warming on average, um, it's like this is not a, like it's not warming everywhere at the same rate and some places are actually getting colder, some places are getting warmer. Um, and so we looked at whether there was a relationship between temperature change and biodiversity change. We focused on the temperate regions um, and what we found was that um, uh, marine um, uh, uh, communities um, are, um, have a, a much stronger signal of change and they tend to actually be gaining species on average with warming. Uh, which was uh, initially surprising, but as we thought about it, um, we, we felt it, it actually makes sense if, if you're focused on temperate uh, regions mm -hmm. because um, uh, what we're seeing essentially is a signal of um, species that are typically, um, well, used to be typically based in, um, in, in warmer regions towards the tropics, which tend to have more species than um, than temperate regions migrating towards the poles. And so we get getting a richer assemblage associated um, with warming. Mm. And if we, don't, we don't see the same signal um, in the terrestrial realm. Okay. And this, this also um, matches closely with what we found in, a, in a, another paper we published last year where, um, where we looked at the geographic variation of, of, of biodiversity change. And again, we saw that the oceans have much, much faster and more extreme changes than terrestrial systems. It seems to be that um, uh, global, biodiversity global change is, is much, much stronger in the oceans than it is on land at mm. the time being. The links to the papers that Maria mentions can be found below this video, along with her contact details if you want to find out more. Just a note, the Atlantic International Research Centre are having their networking Fridays for two more weeks. So these are really relaxed online uh, video calls where there are researchers, government officials and many other individuals who go there and just look for future collaborations. And a link for that, if you want to find out more, could be found below this video. And now moving on to my chat with Jennifer Smith, where she explains what the Nuffield Research Programme is all about and how you can get involved. Hi Jennifer, uh, thank you so much for agreeing to feature in our Mastcast this week. Uh, you're the coordinator for the Nuffield Research Placement Scheme. Uh, do you mind telling us what this scheme is all about, please? The Nuffield Research Placement Scheme um, is usually face-to-face, uh, -face, on-site placement for S5, S6. They're actually S5 when they apply, so they're S6 by summer when they take part 
in, uh, in these projects, um, they are across Scotland. Um, well, they're across the UK, but obviously I coordinate the Scotland end of that. Uh, and we put these students who are high attaining young individuals who are usually from a socially or economically disadvantaged background. Uh, we put them into these research placements which are provided to us by the institutions and organisations across Scotland who carry out research. Um, they are real life projects and it's just to give these, these young, um, very bright individuals the chance to experience that before they choose what STEM career to go on to um, or related path they'd like to go on to. Mm -hmm. So if a researcher from one of our master's institutes was interested, what kind of information should they be aware of? I, I assume things are being moved online uh, due to the current climate. Yes, they are. So this year we have renamed our scheme for the summer. So we are now called um, the research, uh, Nuffield Future Researchers. Um, there was a need obviously to develop this, to move it all online because of the COVID um, pandemic. Um, and face to face just was no longer on the table. And um, so this is what we've done. They are typically a four week project we're looking for. Usually we would say four or five or six weeks, but we are saying four is great because we've um, developed a, a whole set of online modules for the students this year, which will develop their essential skills, their research skills and their data analysis. So we've incorporated these so that the students can work along these alongside the project they're given. Um, and hopefully give them a really well-rounded benefic beneficial experience. Um, but um, we will be doing a supervisor induction this year. That'll take place the first week in June. But obviously, if people come on slightly later, I can sort of um, Zoom them or Teams with them, anything like that they'd like to do, and go over things. Um, and I'm happy to do that at any time. And what's even better this year <laughs> is that if I have a project, but I don't really have a student that matches that project, there's the whole of the UK and there are no geographical barriers because with being online, we can have a student who's down in London who would like to do, you know, a project that I don't have a student for and I can match them up. So a slight silver lining with that. There is, there is always a positive. <laughs> yeah. ah, so this sounds like a great scheme um, and you've obviously got a whole group of budding students who are interested in uh, learning more about STEM and what research entails. So, um, as I said, I will include the website link uh, for the Nuffield Research Placement below this video in the video description, and I will include your contact details for anyone who has any further queries. So, thank you very much for talking to me today. Oh, it's been lovely, Hannah, thank you. And now for an update from Mark James, the SMMR champion. Uh, today is the launch of the announcement of opportunity for the SMMR programme, which is sponsored by uh, NERC and ESRC of UKRI and the full proposal submission deadline for the SMMR program is the 6th of October 2020. So anybody who is interested in producing a proposal has 20 weeks in order to be able to develop the proposal and submit it. That's an unprecedented time scale for, time scale for uh, UKRI uh, because it recognises the fact that many people will have uh, difficulties in preparing proposals in short time frames due to the COVID situation. What's important is that under this program, we've also introduced what's called a notification of intent to submit. So anybody that's interested in submitting a full proposal must submit a notification of intent to submit, which is a fairly uh, light touch form online, and that must be submitted to us by the 12th of June, 2020. So that's midday, 12th of June, 2020. And you can get to the form at the web address noted on the screen at the moment. But it's very important that you complete one of those forms and submit it uh, before that 12th of June, uh, because it will preclude you from applying for the full proposal unless you've submitted a notification of intent to submit. Under the announcement of opportunity, just to remind you, um, projects can be 36 months in duration. They can be a maximum of £1.45 million at 80% FEC. It's very important to note under eligibility that all UK AGIs are eligible to apply, but also public sector research uh, enterprises uh, and that have uh, at least 10 PhDs on the staff, but they must also be registered as IROs. And I would urge any PSRE or any organization uh, partnering with the PSRE uh, to find out whether that organization is actually registered as an IRO. And the details of how to do that can be found on the announcement of opportunity. Grants must start no later 
from the 15th of uh, May 2021. If you need to find out more about the SMR programme and how to apply, that can be found both on the UKRI, NERC and ESRC websites, but also the main source of information will be the SMR website. And that can be found at www.smmr.org.uk and also accessed via the Twitter feed at, at SMMR underscore UK. We've also prepared a frequently asked questions document based on some of the questions that were raised at the uh, meeting that we held on the 31st of March with both stakeholders and researchers, and also subsequently questions that we've received uh, in the interim. So I would urge anybody interested in applying to interrogate that frequently asked questions document because it will hopefully answer some of your immediate questions that you might have. Obviously, because this is what's called an SPF program, there is a requirement that it addresses key government priorities in terms of research in this area. And as a result, what we've been doing is liaising quite closely with policy stakeholders, particularly DEFRA and colleagues from Marine Scotland, to distill their research requirements. And you will find online now um, a document that sets out uh, the, broadly speaking, the research requirements from the DEFRA family. And that includes, uh, obviously, all the devolved administrations and various other organisations that are involved in working in the marine environment. So I would urge you, one, to look at the announcement of opportunity, and two, once you've looked at the frequently asked questions, to in interrogate that uh, policy stakeholder uh, list of interest, because it's quite important that you actually frame your research around uh, those areas that have been highlighted. Now, it's important that, to note that that list is not necessarily definitive. Uh, some of the policy stakeholders are still coming forward with their ideas, and priorities and we will post those up as soon as we have them but at the moment the majority are there for you to look at and I would urge you to think about how you will frame your proposals around uh, those areas. Uh, once you've read the announcement of opportunity, interrogated the FAQs and the policy stakeholder interest, if you still have questions then please feel free to email uh, David Patterson or myself, Mark James, at the SMMI UK web um, uh, email address and we will do our best to answer your questions as quickly as possible. Just a quick note on the notification of intent to submit, or the NOI. That uh, will be, as I say, a lightweight form that you can fill out, and it will serve two purposes. The first is it will give us an idea of the scope of the subject areas that are being addressed, the number of applications that we might expect to receive, but it will also allow you to indicate if you need assistance from us in uh, formulating your pro partnerships around uh, interdisciplinary research. If you need to find uh, the right people within the community, we may be able to help in that process, but also we may be able to direct you to the right people within uh, the stakeholder community, uh, particularly this policy stakeholder community, uh, to liaise with uh, to help develop your proposals. The uh, notification of intent to submit will not be assessed in any way. It's simply uh, fulfilling those two requirements that I've just talked about. And finally, I just wanted to talk about engaging policy stakeholders. Obviously, many of you will have a great desire to talk to people in policy about your proposals, uh, but obviously they are quite busy at the moment. Many are diverted onto COVID-related activities. And so as a first filter, we would urge you to contact uh, the champions, that's David and myself, at the SMMR UK email address, which is on the screen at the moment. We will uh, obviously field those questions and answer them if we have the answers ourselves or we will uh, talk to the appropriate people within the policy divisions and attempt to get answers that way. And if necessary, help uh, those uh, wishing to talk to policy stakeholders directly to set up the appropriate meetings. We're trying to avoid obviously a deluge of, of communication uh, and possibly repetitive communication. So our um, interest is to make sure that we have a completely open, transparent playing field and that any answers that are given by the policy stakeholders are available to everyone and that will be published um, if appropriate on the SMR frequently asked questions uh, page which will grow as we get more questions to answer. That's all I have to tell you at the moment. Please feel free to contact us uh, once you have any queries and we look forward to seeing your potential notifications of interest within the next month. And lastly, the synthesis report from the Horizon 2020 SEERS project that looked at climate change on European fisheries and aquaculture is now open access. The link for that can be found below this video. 
that leaves me just to say stay safe and have a great weekend.